having a wonderful day. Welcome back to Logger Way. Happy to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming back in. Appreciate the heck out of it, okay? Before, when I would do like a phone clean out, sometimes it, I had mixed results. But I've never, ever had six months worth of phone. Never had it that this, this, this friggin' chaotic. Some good, some bad. I want to clean my phone out and show y'all all the gizmos and stuff that's happened this summer and maybe give you a little backlog of what happens this summer. Please give me a chance on it because I think you're going to like it. Let's go. Well, go on, ladies. I heard y'all got another board knocked down over here. I've been fixing fence. Some of our fences getting rotten. The daggone, they're happy to be over. And the bull's happy to look at them. <laughs> Some of our fence is getting rotten over there, the posts. We didn't put caps on our posts. I think that was a mistake. We did the creosote, but we didn't get caps on it, so some of the the weather gets down in there and starts eating on our posts. Oh, quit being nosy, go on. All right, here is a, uh, I don't know why this shot, but that's a shot of a resaw, uh, wheel loader shot. Oh, I was showing them uh, cowboy car crushing, was talking about military equipment See, our wheel loader, we got a 624K. It was actually a KR, John Deere KR. And it has the military, I assume this is the rifle holder. Those of you comment on there down below, what is that, is that for a rifle? Okay, here was a shot when we was finishing Blackie. Uh, Dan had got it running, Dan and the boys got it running. Uh, and they went back, and I was staying back at the shop, and I wanted my truck back. Dan said, I'm busy right now. He said, I'm down to knickknacks. Get the sucker running if you want to. He said, we got, we got it running, excuse me. He said, get her operational if you want to. So I tore in, started doing the air work, the accessory work, started mounting. Everything's custom on this truck, so everything had to be mounted. You're never going to see, well, I don't say never, but you're probably never going to see a truck like this. This has got like, this has got, Blackie's got parts in it from all kinds of different makes and models. It's got Packar parts on it. It's got daggone Freightliner parts on it. It's got... You name it. And then on the international side, it's got 9350, excuse me, 9400 parts. 9900, that's it. That's it on the on the international cab parts and stuff. But I bet it's got parts off Peterbilt, Kenworth, Freightliner. But it's Blackie's a, a daggone like Dolly Parton, that coat that Dolly Parton sang about that time. See the four pins over here in the corner? This is on the excavator computer we had trouble. Had some dirt in it. Plugged them in and pushed them right through the back of the computer plug. Daggone, chintzy and aggravate. Okay, this is our double end trim PLC issue. This Simons Simtac TI 305. That PLC, what a PLC does is it takes a bunch of inputs from buttons, photo cells, you name it, yada yada. So it takes inputs from either the operator or different parts of the machine and it takes them into a software uh, which is your programmable part of this controller and then it will go through say timers yada yada on the out on the out you know kicking send, sending back out signals to run your machinery and this one was an old one he said that them sim tax run all the way back to the late 70s that's how old this system is now this was an upper data or more version when we put the saw in in 1996 but it was like at the end of the road for this guy so there is no it's it's a crapper and what happened is the back plane back there the circuit board in the back where all these cards see uh look all the way to the left you got an output 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 relay and then the blue lines here, input, input, and then you got your CPU, and then on the right is your power source. So your CPU is where you can plug in your com your laptop or your computer and whatever and program it. Anyways, all this mess is outdated as crap, and right in the middle of this crappy year we had, the beginning of the year, with prices and everything, and, our, and I'm not just blaming it all from prices, some of it was other doings, but this thing went out. End up by the time us and David and them got to messing around. We ended up costing 15 grand worth of stuff to get this thing up and running. But now it runs great. David's got us a new system. Uh, it went from, this is 110, and it went from 110 to 24. So the only problem with the 24 DC voltage is you have to have external relays to uh, jump your power down coming in, jump your power up going out. 
that sort of thing, which adds more moving parts, but it's top of the line, customizable, and your 24 volts is a lot less uh, circuit burny, so to speak, where your 110, it cooks a circuit quick, you know, that sort of thing. This was the controller in our scanner. This is our Clearman scanner controls uh, circuits. And we had a fuse blow on this thing, and I don't remember what it was from. I think it was from a loose circuit drawing too much amperage. And we had to dig and prod and dig and prod to find it. But we finally found it. And this was us talking to Dan out there at Clearman's and uh, trying things back and forth. And these, these, uh, so this is all your scanner heads you're seeing there coming in with your uh, yeah, A minuses and B plus and B minuses. And I don't know what the other ones was, but then all the green over here on your right, your grounds. Cause it's got, I forget how many scanner heads on it to, to get through the full curtain scan. So we was checking that stuff and I was sending him pictures back and forth. Then I went out to the woods Oh, Brutus went down. Brutus had a, uh, Brutus's Hydraulics runs a uh, system that is uh, heavy to, the system on Brutus is heavy to electric over hydraulic valving. So it starts out with your buttons on your joysticks. See, a feller buncher has so many moving parts on it that you'd have to have a thousand joysticks. I'm, I'm, being sarcastic okay but you'd have to have a multiple joysticks and stuff and you can only run two you only got two hands you know um, but in doing so they have to add buttons on the controls well then buttons to not be a big old honking switch or something you push all day to be light little buttons you tap 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 the it takes 24 volts through your buttons turns it through a relay and then that relay excites a valve which is a pilot valve that's only running 500 PSI. So them valves, them spools and them valves are small and easy to manipulate on, off, on, off, on, off, depending on your button. And then them pilot, pilot lines go to your main valve bank to run your spool in your main valve bank. So you step up your energy twice. And uh, through them, that makes the operator's life so much better but it also gives you more room for chaos. So I think Derek's machine plumb laid over on him, his cab tilt laid over, and he was laying on a track. So he goes, come help me get this. He said, I'm not quite used to this yet. Cause you know, I kind of passed Brutus off to him or ran Brutus for a few years there. And uh, Derek, man, his brains. I trust him 100% because I, that's, Brutus is a hard job to get. It's not for the faint of heart. And Derek can step right in there. I think he's been, if he's not already better than I was, he's definitely going to be better than I was. Uh, this is back on the farm, starting to move some rock. This is before the Dendan -den burnt to the ground. And uh, I was showing my sister, Sergeant Pants, I was hauling some rock on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday or something. And uh, just another view of Sergeant Pants. Man, that's been a good truck. It's a 1969 uh, AM813, I believe. So. And it's got the Cummins engine in it. I forget what it is. And it's got a uh, two-speed transfer case, four-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, a two-speed transfer case. And it's got, uh, I assume, Mac rear ends in it. It looks like the Mac rear ends, the... Uh, the doodads are sitting on top. Um, and a two-speed transfer case. And it's a really nice truck. I really love it. We use it quite, not quite a bit, but when we use it, we use it. Oh, this is the morning of the fire. Boy, get down here and look what happened to our poor Din Din. And look at how crispy this thing got. Now, them panels on the side of that thing is quarter-inch steel. And it melted plumb through them panels. It cooked everything plumb through. It's it's ridiculous. It bent the box boom back on the down on the main pin on the bottom of the main boom. There's a bubble in the box boom where the heat, I assume, swelled up inside the box boom and made itself bubble out from the heat expansion of the fire. Uh, no, I mean, everything in there, the goose is freaking cooked. Let's go to the next picture. Here's more towards the back of it. 
And if you look under the bottom track down there, see that aluminum river coming out? That's from plumb up to under the motor, down the ground, running aluminum down over the hill. Uh, you can see a pile of aluminum on the tracks underneath that door that's cracked open. That back door, look at the pile of aluminum on the tracks. It is just, it is a cooked, cookie cooked rig. All right, next. Here's the other side. Now, over there where Levi's at, look against the den den, you can still see smoke coming out of it. I mean, it was still smoking. And that's, tw that's after burning for 24 hours. Cab is just basically nothing in that cab's worth the hoot. Now, you can see it smoking a little bit on the left over there, you know. All right, moving to now that was a hit now. I had, had a few hits from uh, good key employees, losing good key employees this spring, chasing uh, better opportunity. And all power to them. No, 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 you know, no regrets. To, you know, no, no, no animosity there. I, I, I uh, but I did have to get a bunch of stuff organized. I feel better now. But at the time, man, I was pretty low right here. This is, this is about three weeks after I quit making bitches. This hit. This here was, uh, oh, the servo on the uh, resaw. That was an issue, but we got that figured out. And I went ahead and made a paper. Guys, paper trail, man. When it gets confusing, don't carry thoughts in your brain. Trust me, my brain's cooked. So I don't carry thoughts in my brain. You put that schniz on paper. And then, you, and then when it's something like this, you need to share with other people. I duct tape it right to the inside of the control panel. So you know where to go through if your sets, if your units. See, anytime you measure an encoder on a, um, say, a uh, processing head, it's got an encoder on our, or on a computer chop saw like down in our, anytime you're measuring lineal feet and you got an encoder, it's going to take counts into your program and you got to take them counts and turn them into an inch or portions of an inch or portions of a meter, which a meter or whatever the metrics are. But that's through coding, you know, you have to put all that in, inputs in. So I had all the limits and sets and stuff wrote down and then, you know, went through that. Anyways, just wanted to touch on that. Oh, we went to Niagara Falls. Here's the family. My boy's getting big. My boys are growing like a weed. Mommy, she's cute as she's ever been. She's a sweetheart. And then the twins are growing, starting to grow like weeds. Everybody's out growing everything. Of course, Mommy's like, hey, don't. I was a nerd growing up. I didn't care. Well, I didn't really. I cared like I wanted to fit in, but I didn't care enough to change to fit in. <laughs> but Mommy's like, I know what my boys made fun of. Now, look at this. Mommy's totally conscientious minded. Under Armour, Under Armour, Under Armour. I said, they're going to outgrow that expensive crap. And no, Mommy wants them in good clothes. So that's that's Mommy's part. Trying to break me up. Uh, but break us up. I, I should not. No, not break up. I meant break us up money-wise. But she cares about her boys. Mommy does it. She's a good mommy. I really love mommy. She's a good one. But here's above Niagara Falls. I, I'll try to remember all the specifics. This is above Bridal Falls. There's like three falls in Niagara Falls. The American Falls, Bridal Falls is in the middle, which is the smallest, and then Horseshoe Falls, which is the big whammy. The horseshoe-shaped falls, that's on the Canada side. But there's the uh, rapids and stuff coming down to Bridal Falls. And here's right above Bridal Falls, looking into, that's Canada over in the skyline. And uh, Bridal Falls coming down. And uh, pictures, there's Jackson. And he was pouting. And Jackson, he can pout. So I pick, so you don't want to pout in my family. In this family, you don't want to pout. If you pout, you get picked on. So I had the camera on taking pictures of him and stuff while he was pouting, just so he could see what a what a pouty little sissy he looked like. And then they, and the problem is they do it to their dad too. Holy cow. So 99 meters, I mean, it's well over 300 foot high. This is Bridal Falls. Bridal Falls right here. I don't know how it got its name. Mommy, how do you think Bridal Falls got its name? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Three, three, uh, 99 meters high, so that'd be well over 300 feet high. 
I may not drop my phone here. There's a rainbow. Oh my gosh. That's a rock. All the sea chickens is on Mount Rock. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Holy cow, this is amazing. Alright, here's a picture on the edge of uh Alright, Bridal Falls is behind me, and then over here is American Falls. American side was like almost a hundred feet. Uh deadfall. Bridal Falls 75 feet before it hits the rocks. And then on the Canada side, it's like 120, 120 feet fall. I'm not sure if I'm right on all that. But the seven figures are somewhere in a pickle barrel. But they're enough to... The power of that water was freaking cool. And there is, uh, down there, look at all that catwalk and stuff down there. Scaffolding down there below Bridal Falls there. And them rocks actually probably 50 to 60 feet. In elevation change from that where the water first pounds down to where the rapids run down over the hill and we're getting ready to go down in there and there's the uh, mate of the mist heading up to Horseshoe Falls in Canada and there's a little bit of a rainbow look at that bank over there you see where all the factories and all the uh, water powered uh, industrial stuff used to be man they really throw it our industrialization let me level with y'all while we're on this picture right here. I want y'all to look at this picture. I want y'all to think of something. We went in there and we watched this video they put on. Just dogging the people, the industrial people that set up an industrial site there and talking about how like the people that's industrialized this stuff ruined everything and they made everything terrible and they suck and global warming, we killed everything and we're terrible, smack ourselves. You know, and I'm like, you mother trucking unappreciative pieces of shit god i hate that pit that made me so talk about triggered boys i was triggered when you come to running down our industry running down the men and women that builds our industry i'm spiking words as far as i'm under I, of course these greenies out there probably whine that i'm destroying their, i'm like Mother trucker, what are you doing to help a damn thing? Other sitting there whining like a little ball bag. Go fudge yourself, as far as I'm concerned. I mean it. That's terrible. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. Running our daggone industry down. Oh, I was, oh. But I'm not, I control my, uh, I control my brain. My brain don't control me. So I sat there and kept my mouth shut and endured it. But to anybody, if anybody watches this from Niagara Falls by chance, that is bull mess. 100% bull mess. Freaking propaganda to, to kids, you know. Yeah, we need to be conscientious of the world. That's what we're doing, you dumbass. We're doing that as we're doing our jobs. And they sit there on the sideline, don't do crap, and sit there and whine about how we're doing it. I'm like, well, then get out there and do it yourself, you freak. Work from home. Get off, get off the daggone couch and get out there and do it. Then you think you can do it better. God, that makes me aggravate. Let's move on. All right, so there's American side, and there's a bridge over to Canada, and then right in the middle of it is an observation tower they put in. <clears throat> now, I think I read on this that that observation tower was going to be a footbridge to Canada at one time. But then they vetoed it over security issues, I think. But 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 I think that's what it was. But I'm not sure of that. But it is real cool that observation tower is, nonetheless. And then there's those American Falls again. There's Below Bridal Falls right there. And we had some good pictures from Below Bridal Falls. We got to go out on this catwalk and stuff, and we had a blast. There's a, there's a, if you look up there, you can see Horseshoe Falls up there in Canada. Uh, and then, uh, these decks, they take them all down in the wintertime, I believe they said. All this yellow, or yellow, all this burgundy colored deck they take down in the wintertime. Which I thought was very interesting that they done that, you know. Cause they, cause, and then they got, you know, braces and stuff freshened up, you know, every year. They get a little wood rot going on. There's mommy and daddy. 
She's so cute. I know you might do one of the little cheeks. And then there's the boys with the backdrop of some of the stuff of Bridal Falls there. And there's Woo Woo. And Jackson's at Levi on the right. Jackson in the middle. Calvin on the left. Calvin is my sassy one. You can tell by looking at his face, he's sassy. And then the middle one's Jackson. He's just me made over again. Jackson's just daddy all over again. And then on the right, Levi, he's more reserved. He keeps a lot of things internal. He's, he's going to make, he'd make a good timber buyer because he, he keeps things on the inside. He keeps his cards close to his vest. And very, I, I love I love that boy. Very good people skills. And here's uh, Bridal Falls. And you can see the 50, 60, 70 foot drop, whatever that is, down through the rapids just to get from the end of the waterfall down to pool stage of the water. And then there we took, had somebody, uh, no, Daddy took a picture of Mom and boys. And then there's Daddy and the boys. And uh, we got soaked. And then there's Mommy looking up at us, getting soaked up there. And then there's a place where you can get up there and just stand in the water. There it is. Where you're sitting there just standing in the water up there. Daggone, that was awesome. I just stood there and let the water pound on me for like 20, 30 minutes. Everywhere I go, I want to reflect. When I go somewhere that's, that's, that's worthy, I want to reflect. And I just sat there and reflected in that water a while. That was great, standing in that. Oh my God, that was great. The power of it. Look at all that. Would you? Would you? What? What beauty. Just beautiful. I loved it. Okay, now, there's signs everywhere. You know, they say the thing about rules is, is you don't want to make too many rules because rules have to be enforced. Well, here's a situation where they made too many rules. Now, it's illegal to go over the falls un without a permit. And they don't issue permits anymore to go over the fall in a barrel or nothing like that. So you can't really get in a barrel and go over the falls legally. You either die, number one, or number two, you'll get arrested. But there's signs and everything. Stay away from the falls. Stay away from the falls. You know, don't get down there. Don't get down there. But they don't enforce it. So, Mommy, I was like, what's that? That's a Goodyear blimp. So, Mommy, anyways, got rid of Mommy and the kids. I said, give me two hours to reflect. I want two hours to myself to reflect to the power of this Mother Nature. And, and that really gets my rocks off, man. Every year, I want to go somewhere that makes me feel small and stand there by Mother Nature's beauty and reflect. So, I walked all the way down right beside all this powerful water and I stuck my feet down in the water. Now I couldn't get close enough to the edge to dangle my feet off the falls, but I went down there within six foot of the drop off of Canada Falls, Horseshoe Falls there. And right in front of me, I sat down on that rock right there in front of me and dangled my feet down in the water. And you talk about awesome. I just sat there forever. I don't know how long. Then I got up and I thought, that's where I sat right there. And right off the end of that's, you know, a hundred and something foot drop. Right after all that, I went walking up through the rapids. There I am sitting farther up. I went walking through the rapids up there and I just waited. I went out and all that. I didn't walk up and out in the middle of it and didn't take a chance on getting swept away, but I walked barefooted all the way up through these rapids. Amazing the power of this river. And that's the tip, very tip of the Canada's Horseshoe Falls. That's the farthest tip upriver. And then this group of trees right here, this is the American Bank of Horseshoe Falls there. Alright, uh, anyways, I walked up there and done all that. But here we went to see my brother. And my brother, here's my brother. He's not in Vidges very much because he lives in New York now and he runs his own mill in New York. Uh, they kind of branched out and spread out and done their own thing. But he, when he first moved to New York, he went to work for Wagner's, and uh, which is a great big mill up in Wago, New York. And he helped a bunch on putting this new mill in. And he's proud of this mill and everything. And he wanted me to come see a big hardwood sawmill. So... Me and him got to drinking this before. I, now, I don't drink no more, but this is right towards the end. I spent, this is the last weekend that, that Logger Wade drank. Uh, I wanted to have my last few drinks with my brother. So we went to New York and me and him got soused up 
And he said, I'll tell you what, it was Saturday night late, and we was both jacked, off jack. He said, let's go check out that sawmill. I said, what if they see us? He said, well, I helped put the son of a buck in. They can run me off if they want. But he said, let's go see it. So, I, hell yeah, don't threaten me with a good time. So we went down there and we toured it, went through the place, and got to see all the cool stuff and uh, look at all the bands back there uh, under the beach over there on that wall. But they, it is a really cool meal. It's got two uh, head saws, uh, multiple resaws, uh, very quick carriages, and uh, very, very well set up. Uh, and it's got overhead crane. You see it up there in the top of the picture. And there's Rob in one of the resaw cabs, just grinning and being uh, bashful. Um, he's showing me the controls. How they dispatch cans and stuff into the into the computer system is really cool. That screen above him. This is the resaw cab, mind you, not the head saw cab. Look at all the computer and stuff like that just in the resaw cab. And the uh, what's cool is the computer feeds the resaw. The resaw operator is dispatching. He's just dispatching cans and hitting enter on a button, and then the, and the computer takes the cans and sends them through the saw. It's I just thought that was very cool. And there's some of the decks feeding things and some drops. I, I must have took his picture because I wanted to retain information from some of this or something. There's the file room. Now, this is what I showed Rick and Ball. Rick and Ball got a kick out of this. And I'm sorry, Rob, but I'm going to show it. This My brother Rob, he, he, he's big on this right CNC machine, and we are not. A CNC machine in a file room gives you options to do multiple things. If you're filing bands for other people if you're running a file shop i could see that being a benefit so you can bring somebody's bands in set up a certain way hit print and grind away but at our place we do the same band in the same mill the same everything there is no reason for us to have a cnc all it is is extra bull mess and the men just complain and bitch about this machine because it'll get little problems because of the way the CNC XY axis works on the grinding wheel and oh it's aggravating but they get so aggravated it's like I was like they're like well can we just go back to something that pushes yank 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 they said it's all it ever needed to be yank yank you know what I mean what's gonna mess up well the cam load went, wore off you know well let's get a new cam you know what I mean but we went to Waggers and they had these CNCs in there. And then since my brother left, they took them out. <laughs> He's like, what? What happened? <laughs> Anyways, I showed Rick and Ball and he blew up laughing. He thought this is the funniest thing. Like they went back. So we're running a CNC in our little sawmill. And here's this great big mega mill. They don't even need to CNC. <laughs> It was just funny. We thought that was funny. Rob, Rob, my brother, though, he was like, what? And I said, Rob, you don't understand. All the rest of us, we're not getting that into the bands. He goes, he goes, which Rob's defense was, that don't excuse you to get less. That does not, how did Rob say it? He's real intelligent. My brother's real smart. That don't excuse you to refuse to advance. I thought that's a good point. But your average Joe, he's thinking about getting his stuff done and getting home to the kids. Okay, I did have pictures the other day of the New River Gorge uh, Bridge. And me and Levi's up at like a 100 foot drop off at this bridge. And look how tall the deck is up there, that thing. Just look at the size of it. It is just one amazing thing. I, I advise everybody to go see New River Gorge, man. There's a rock heading down the twisty little twirly road heading underneath the bridge. And there's a bridge up above us. And there we're crossing the little wooden bridge, little wooden bottom bridge. And down there below, in them rapids, down there blowing this picture, that's where me and Levi went swimming. Down there where you're looking at is where we went swimming. When I was talking about us having a little swim. You know, at this point, we're crossing this bridge. Me and him's done drove from Washington, D.C. to here today. This day, we're showing the picture. We had drove from Washington, D.C. to right here. And then get 
we, we pulled out there where everybody's parked, opened the door where they couldn't see us, stripped down into our swimming trunks, and went down there and went swimming. Come back up, wrapped the towel around us, sit down on the towel, and started driving again. And then after this, we drove to eight supper. About the time we got dried off, you know, driving down the road, we threw a shirt on, went in ate supper, and then got back in the car and drove hundreds of miles home that night. It's just amazing. If you get used to tripping in a car, and uh, we got a rental car, this is not our car. We get rental cars and we do something like that because we're not putting miles on our cars and rental cars are enterprise usually, but rental cars are looked after. So you know that everything's good and you know that you're not wear and tear on your personal car. And we love it. We love getting a rental car and going. And uh, there's another picture up at the the bridge up there. I forget the specs on the bridge. I think people died making it and stuff. It was just, it was just awe inspiring. There's my first load of logs from Kaufman Logging. They, they brought in my first load of this, the first load of logs Logger Wade bought. It happened in the end of July or first of August was my first load of logs coming in. I was so grateful. I swarmed a truck driver. Like all of the mills going, yeah, 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 everybody's a cheering and everything. That was our first load of logs come in. Very much appreciated. Oh, and this was our 4600 Ford tractor. I had a fuel leak. I had to get, I bought some stuff on, off Amazon, I believe, and fixed that on injector pump. Uh, here's was a coil going from uh, 480, 460 volt, 480 volts down to 120. Uh, took a picture of that. Oh, here was the new Din Din. So this is why me and Levi went. We tripped out there to uh, Virginia, uh, right up below Washington, D.C., and bought this Din Din. Excavator, sorry, those of you who don't know. Uh, it had actually been in the forestry, and it was ready to go. I, I, we'd really researched getting a 328, and it was just too big. The 328 was just too big. And, and I was, you know, and, and, but the pound for punch on a 328, the value was in the 328D. The 328 was better value <clears throat> than the 321, but the 321, it's just the right size for getting in the woods and doing things. And I wanted to not be stuck in the yard. I wanted to get down in the woods and be able to help. That reach on these excavators in the woods, uh, making crossings and things of that nature is really nice. So I didn't want to give that up. All right, moving along. Oh, here was Blackie when Blackie first. That bulldozer was the first load on Blackie once we got Blackie running. At this point, I, I hauled the dozer to the farm that day. I had to guesstimate the mileage for the Guberman, but because uh, the speedometer wasn't working yet. And then the bumper was still black, and I had a bunch of, uh, you look in front of the grill on Blackie, there's holes there. I had to do some uh, trim work on the bumper which the bumper did turn out looking a bit big and gaudy, but but we'll get into that here in a little bit. But I still have the lights to go under the cab. Uh, I have some work to do inside the interior, and I have to hook up a cable throttle from a mechanical throttle because the cab's on air ride, and the throttle can be jumpy. All right, here was, this was on the farm. Me and the boys was on the farm. Now, we was doing farm work, and I had moved all the equipment into the farm, all our spare equipment at this time. While we was restructuring, going through things, we had some slide issues from seeps on our hillside that created slide issues. And I thought, you know what? We have rock on the farm. We'll haul some rock over and make some French drain type of stuff. And uh, in doing so, <clears throat> I'll get all this excess equipment that we have at this point because we don't have we didn't have enough people at the time. So we're gonna bring this excess equipment in instead of just sitting in a lot being useless and we're gonna work on this farm stuff on the weekend. And I thought, now's the time I'm gonna start training my kids. Levi's on the bulldozer. Calvin's over there in the mini den loading up Sergeant Pants with rock. Jackson is on the big excavator loading uh, Tiny. And here's Calvin scooping through his rocks. And he's slow and hard to watch on it. But 
He was trying to keep the dirt out. I need to get like a skeleton bucket for the mini. Jackson's on the big one, taking little scoops to the truck, but he's getting used to swinging and he's getting used to his balance. You know, that zero tail swing, you get all that weight with that big, heavy thumb on it out there, and it does get a little butt heavy if you got a full load of bucket. And it kind of spooked him a little bit, so it took him a little bit to get used to it. And Levi's down there at the dozer, pushing things up to him, and I'm the truck driver. I dump the big truck, I come back, and then I'll take pants and go dump it, whatever needs done, and, and take pictures. And there's another swing. There's Levi backing down over the hill of the dozer. Um, and Jackson coming back empty to make him another bite. There are two pictures here. There's Calvin. And uh, he's just scooping around. I don't know why I took so many pictures. I love these boys. Proud of them. And there's another picture of Jackson swinging over the back of the truck with a half a bucket full at the most. <laughs> I said, load that daggone bucket up. You're driving your daddy nuts. He said, no, daddy is tippy. Whatever, boy. Here we go. This was Mama's tractor wreck. She was spread manure with her 8360. And she got up, and this was midsummer. This is towards the end of July. We just done another, her second cutting of hay, and she was spread manure while the boys was doing stuff. We was all busy on that farm this day. And this tractor, it's not like a John Deere don't have park. It's just got one of these little emergency brakes you pull up on with the handle. And it's not a good setup. I hate that setup. But it's New Holland setup, whatever. Um, she had, I don't know what the heck she was thinking. But she had to, had a stop up in the manure spreader. So she's up on the hill and she goes to get in the back of the manure spreader, clicks that park brake, gets up in the back of the manure spreader, goes to shovel it out. Next thing she knows, the manure spreader's moving. So she dumps out of the manure spreader as fast as she can, runs up there beside the tractor. By this time, the tractor was going so fast to load a manure on that she was like, I can't, I can't try to get in the tractor because I'll end up ran over. So she just backs away and lets the tractor run over the hill and crashes in this ash tree after thumping and bopping around. It rips all kinds of stuff loose. It, it turned out better than it turned out better than it could have than it should than it might have. But it still, I told her I do not have time for this crap. You will have to get it. She turned it in the insurance. That was her third. They say everything comes in threes. Well, this was the third one. This tractor was. Because Roger Skidder also burnt down. So we had the Big Din Din burn down. We had Roger's Skidder burn down. And then this tractor get wrecked. But it ripped the trunnion out of the front axle. There's the front axle how, uh, shield and stuff all bent and screwed up. The axle wasn't leaking oil. So I guess the axle might have been okay. Um, some of the electrics in the four-wheel drive assembly there might have got messed up a little and I think it, I don't think it had a hydraulic hose leak, so the hydraulic hoses was fine. I just capped them off and put them together and stuff. There, there's a bent wheel, ruined wheel, ruined tire. Uh, trunnion's messed up on the axle mount. Uh, bent tie rod, I think the axle housing's fine. Bent tie rod across the, uh, ruined the fuel tank, which was having fuel issues anyways. Try the tire fender. Uh, busted the glass in the rim. Pretty screwed up. We hauled it to Sh Kenny Shurds, and uh, they're actually working on that tractor right now as we speak. We told him, he's like, take it. I'm not fooling with it. She's turned in on insurance. Of course, that's the first thing she wanted to do is pull it in the shop. And I was like, no, no, I don't want it. Get that thing out of here. I don't want nothing, no part of this. I actually tried to get her to buy John Deere. And then we got to looking at the price of the John Deere's and was like, all right, maybe we better fix this one. <laughs> but here's, uh, here's after I went and recovered it. Me and Levi and the twins after school one day, I took him back and Levi took the bulldozer and I took the, the Din Din and Levi pulled it out with the bulldozer. Levi was 14 years old and he recovered his tracker. I made this piece of steel this, the front end sitting on the tractor and then and then 
chained it to the bucket on the uh, excavator, on the big dirt bucket, the big tooth bucket, and it had like a spreader. So I'd hold up on the front of the tractor and Levi pulled it out with the bulldozer. The only problems we ran into was when I had a turn on the excavator. I had a little trouble making the turns with the excavator. But you can see the busted front windshield on it and the busted fuel tank and stuff. And let me click through a few pictures here. There's the hours on it. This tractor has no hours. It's set a lot. It was not in, we bought it new and that wasn't intelligent. But when we bought it, we was doing other things. We was farming when we bought this. We was farming quite a bit more than we are now when we first bought this tractor. But, but other than that, it was a bad decision. Buying a new tractor as part-time farmers is not a good decision, but we did it. It was the end of the 90s. We didn't know better. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so, Ezekiel, Jason had to miss a day of work to do something. He's a fork trucker down below. He runs a tailor. And this guy is good. I'm so proud of him. He's one of the good ones now. He's, his nerves gets to him sometimes, and he admits it. You know, his nerves can, can get to him. But this is a stressful job, this fork trucking is. Well, Ezekiel went to do it one, uh, for a week while Jason was going on vacation this summer. It was the end of July. And uh, my hat's off to Ezekiel. He did everything. That boy worked his butt off to make everything work. But he ended up taking a fork and forking this bearing. Now, you look underneath this bearing. This bearing is busted. You can see where that bolt is. See the cracks in the bearing housing? And then in the middle of one of these days, somebody said, well, you got to go fix that bearing. And I was like, I am not splitting that chain up tonight and doing all this stuff tonight. I said, I'm going to do a sawmill hack job. So I welded this piece of angle iron on, welded this strap over the bearing, shoved it all back together, and it's still like that. It's worked all summer. It looks like crap, and we'll have to cut it all off the torch one of these days when we put a new bearing in it, but it works fine, and it's actually fork resistant now. Oh, this is Marco Bloom and Heather. So Marco and Heather is from Switzerland. And they are a beautiful couple. I love these people. They come up. The end of one week, I finally got the kit from Rotebeck to put the Rotebeck head. You see that yellow cable hanging by Heather's head up there. And uh, I was doing that right in the middle when they come. And I was like, guys, I'm sorry. I can't entertain you like I want to because I am fudged. Like I was so daggone busy. So they stayed with us, and I'd send them out on a little day trip. So they go on here, and they go there, and they got to see all kinds of cool stuff. And they spent two weeks in America. Yeah, I photobombed them. She was beautiful, and he's a good, he's, they're just a beautiful couple from Switzerland. Uh, I just loved it. I loved spending time. It was an amazing to get to see them, too. That was amazing. Marco and Heather, if there's any chance you see this, Thank you so much for coming and spending time with us. That was freaking awesome. I learned so much. I wrote down like four or five pages in my journal from these guys just in the couple nights they spent here. Just all night hammering them with questions and stuff like that. It's neat how things work in Switzerland. And there we are when I first got to head. So this was the day after Marco and Heather left. I finally got to head on. I took his picture to send to Marco to show him, hey, I got it on there. But I basically plumbed and wired this head in a day and a half. Of course, a lot of the plumbing was there because this thing already had auxiliaries. That's one of the reasons I bought it. But this head, I had it wired up, plumbed up, and running with the new joysticks, the box, control boxes, and everything wired in. It was up and running in a day and a half. And it, it's it been, it's nice to have. There's the new joysticks mounted in the, uh, the new Din Din. And you see the yellow cable, I'll run it up alongside the cab so it's somewhat protected up there. And there it is. After I got it running, I ran it for about two hours, just cleaning back woods and stuff around the farm, putting, putting it through its paces, making sure it's going to operate. And I had this boneheaded idea that I could leave that thumb on there. But there it is. I pulled it up beside the, dirt, the burnt den den with the bucket on it and took a picture of comparing the old and new. Now, my old one that burnt was a 2012. The new one we got was a 2008. So we went four years backwards in design. And I seen it 
in the wheel motor and the drive motor and some and a few other places you can see that they've made some improvements on our burnt machine that, that wasn't on the 08 that we got now but it's close to the same rig operates soft operates smooth it don't have quite the lift power on the main boom as our old one has had excuse me correction had uh, and I'm gonna get in there and figure that out and there they are parked side to side same model now them double grouser pads on the burnt one I really miss them on the new one but on the new one I could take it in the log yard and stuff at the mill so I don't know how much I really do miss it I'm not sure of that I might stick with the triple bars now that I have them don't know yet uh, there they are another picture of them in the back there's another picture from the side in the back. You can see the body is a little bit different than the body I made for mine. Now, the, the, the original one really had a woods body. It had a body you could take that sucker down in the woods and you could thump around in the woods and the trees and stuff, and it did fantastic. Now, this new one, it's woods resistant. It is not woods proof like the other one was. So you kind of got to be careful of what you're doing. Uh, and I might modify it a little bit over time, but probably not much just because we're buying logs now. And I, when I go out in the woods with this thing now, I'm mostly in the yard or making crossings or something like that. I might top a little bit down the woods, but I don't go in the woods much with it anymore. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll leave it alone. I'm not sure yet. Oh my God, here was Lord Muck and Calamity Kate. Now this is a funny story on Lord Muck and Calamity Kate. So Lord Muck come up in September, 1st of September, when Dirt Perfect and all of them went to the uh, the Utility Expo in Louisville. Kind of a big deal. I went one year. It is a big deal. <clears throat> but they come up for that, come over for that from, from uh, England. And uh, I've known Muck online for years, but I never had got to meet him. And I never had even met even talked, even messaged Calamity Kate. I didn't know about Calamity Kate. So she come over with him. First thing I thought, number one, she's gorgeous. Number two, she's freaking tall. I was like, who is this tall drink of water walking around? And Mike started talking about her, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I just started grilling Calamity Kate with questions. So anyways, she takes a picture in front of Blackie. And you know, I was... I was flexing a little, you know, I was like, you know, good looking blonde and stuff and taking picture in front of my truck, you know, so I started showing off a little bit, you know, I was like, yeah, it's a pretty big truck you got there going on and on and Calamity Kate, she pulls her phone out and shows me her truck, which was, I think, a Scania or a Volvo, I can't remember which, which hers is, but she's got this big truck, goes down the road moving heavy haul equipment, looks like a freaking truck a -peed. sit there and let me run down there. Making a total fool of myself, like I'm I'm all this in a bag of chips, and she's got a bigger truck. She's probably way better at it than I am. And it's sitting there, I'm like, oh my gosh. You talk about when you know what the you know what I mean? You talk about sticking your foot in your mouth. I ate my whole daggone foot. That was funny. And she's into she does machine work. She's redoing this little tiny bulldozer. It's cute. I mean, it's just I said, where the heck did you find her? He said, she was off, I got her on, on YouTube. We got together on YouTube. And I was like, oh my God. Of course, she's sitting there. We're talking about her like she ain't even sitting there. You know what I mean? And she goes, she goes, I said, my God, you did good. And she goes, she goes, uh, she goes, well, what about me? I said, you didn't turn out near as good. You didn't come out near as good on the deal as what he did. <laughs> But what a wonderful couple. I can't wait. To, I hope I get to see them both again. Uh, but what? check out Calamity Cake stuff. She is, she is awesome. All right. Then we went. Irma burnt down, and I'll finally get you some pictures of the burnt skitter. Uh, Irma's burned down. But we went and looked for a skitter, and we ended up going to Forestry first. And... Uh, I fell in love with this 630E. I really did. Now we're having a little trouble getting acquainted with it because we bought it and brought it home. Uh, because it, it, we always do. When we do something new and try something new, uh, it takes us a while to get accustomed to it. But once we do, 
I remember when we first started using that big grapple, the John Deere big grapple, it was a 648 G3. We first started using it, we was like, well, we can't use this. Well, this won't go here. Well, this don't do that and everything. Next thing you know, that thing is moving all kinds of wood, you know, and this thing's gonna be the same daggone way. Jordan, this is Jordan's baby. He, uh, he he's, he's really getting used to it. And I gotta work on a few things because, you know, anybody that sells something used, at the point they sell it, they're like, well, I'm not fixing that, I'm selling it. Well, I'm not gonna fix that, I'm gonna sell it. You know, so when you buy something used, you will have to do, and you need to learn to appreciate that time you spend getting it ready. Because that time, that intimate time you spend with that machine getting it ready to run, is how you learn about its ins and outs, you know. So we went through, and uh, uh, here's Jared, and I forgot the old boy's name beside, and the one on the right, Jared's the tall one in the middle, and the one on the right, he's a freaking good dude too. These guys right here, I'm telling you, if you need a machine for logging, call these guys right here. You will not be disappointed. We hooked up drags, pulled drags, we did everything, you name it. Run any any colored machine you want down there. They got green ones, they got yellow ones, they got, they, you got, you name it. They're all there. And we ran them all. And I'm telling you, that's the one for us right there at 630E. And then driving back, we drove through South Carolina. No. The bottom of North Carolina, I think, is where we're at. And we drove through the rocks and stuff. Levi and Jackson went with me on this trip. I forgot to mention him. Levi was my uh, co-pilot. He was my navigator. He had the uh, the instructions. And then Jackson, he uh, he was the uh, entertainment. He's like me. He's entertainment with his kids. We, he, when, when it, he's just a blast. So sweet, so fun. We got up early this morning. It was just getting daylight when we pulled into here. It was another, it was about like it was before. Except since Jackson was with us, we stayed two nights in a hotel instead of just one night. We actually stayed in a decent hotel for two nights. We didn't stay in crappy, crapper deep. Here we are driving through, uh, daggone, I forgot the daggone names of half of this stuff. But we're driving through the mountains in North Carolina. Look at that. Look at them daggone mountains down through there. Just beautiful. And it's early in the morning. It's probably it's probably getting 6.30, 7 o'clock their time. We had to drive all the way up this crooked dog path to get up the top of the hill. Drive around. More pictures of stuff. More pictures of fog. Here's a big old lake we stopped and took a walk at. We just picked on each other, throwed rocks in this son of a buck. We had a blast. Now I'm picking on Jax again. I just take pictures of Jackson picking on him, I guess. Found an awesome meal. They was nailing pallets. And they was teaching us about, we learned, well, we learned at this meal, I forget the name of the daggone meal. Uh, it was in the edge of South uh, North Carolina, getting ready to get to the Tennessee border. There's a small sawmill. These guys was an investing family. They're, they're sitting here nailing pallets and stuff, but their mentality is investing. Their son's big investor and stuff, and they end up with this mill, and they end up signing to run it, you know. And, and uh, the way they look at wood was interesting to me. And then they just start. So I started, I got out my notepad and started taking notes. This was their quick pallet situation. Um, it's just makeshift and it's just quick to make some pallets. Here is their tie stacking system. Uh, they got, and they pull it out of this with the wheel loader and it's got a bunk they stack it in off to the side. Simple, cheap, effective. And that part I loved about this setup. And I was like, man. So I started taking pictures like, we can do this. We can do this. And there's the tiger cat rolled in. Oh, and that was a fortune. Here's Blackie. Here's where I first redone the bumper, and Blackie has got the speedometer working, and Blackie is in business. Uh, this was the first load of logs Blackie took out of the shop. And my bumper looks a bit big, but the truck, it fits better on the truck now, but it looks a bit big in these pictures. 
Here's another picture from the passenger side. And you see the chrome breathers on it? The chrome breather is out of a uh, 9900i. It's just a, a whole, an MR, MR Chevrolet over under tail lights on them, just so y'all know. The light buckets are from a Chevy pickup. But uh, there Blackie is with his first load. And uh, that was a, and here it is in the front. Blackie looks so cool. The bumper does look freakishly large on here, I will say that. But it grows on you. It's a, it's a working bumper. You can stand on it. You can do stuff. You can push things. You can push out trucks. You can do everything with that bumper. And there's Blackie headed down the road. Oh, I bought a set of loader tires down in Arkansas on the wheels. I don't know if I even got pictures of them on here, but on the way down there. So this one morning, I couldn't sleep. I was up at 12 o'clock. I went to bed one night at just overwhelmed with work, stressed out. Money needed to turn around. Things was just stressing me out and I couldn't sleep. It was about 1230 at night. And I said, you know what? I actually had Larry set up to go down and get these uh, loader tires in Arkansas with a uh, pickup and a uh, gooseneck car trailer type of thing. I thought, I told mommy, I said, I can't sleep. It was Thursday morning. It was, it was Wednesday night and we was in the mill wasn't going to run Thursday because we made her 100,000 feet by Wednesday. I said, I'm going to Arkansas. I need to get away from everybody. I need to shut my phone off and then you go to Arkansas, which I didn't shut my phone off. I just said that. So midnight, I slept for like two or three hours and then midnight, two hours, two hours. I went to sleep at 10 and got up at midnight and got the truck, snuck down, didn't wake anybody up. There was guests in the guest house and everything. And I snuck past the guest house, got the trailer, drove all the way through the night. I pulled over a rest stop when I got tired and slept a little bit off on an entrance ramp. I cat nap for 10 15 minutes and wake back up and drive a little farther drive all the way down to arkansas this is cotton fields and these are cotton pickers and there was cotton stuff all over the place down there and i was driving there's there i am in a red truck in a trailer if you look in the rear view mirror there you can see I, this is on my way back i had got the tires got the tires from a great big cotton gin them tires is for our cotton loaders. Uh, but they put different tires because they drive out in the field. I forget how many bales of cotton these people do. They make these big round bales. And I don't know how many bales of cotton these guys do, but there was a whole fleet of trucks. You're talking millions and mil millions, plural dollars of cotton these people process. They said, we're the biggest cotton gin in our area. It was amazing. And there they are, bales on the side of the road. So they bail them up the, bail up the cotton and put them on the side of the road and they come with these trucks and then them are peanut farms. So them are peanuts that you're looking at. Rows of peanuts. And there was peanut pickers going too. There's more cotton. There's a cotton picker on the side of the road. Cotton picker baler type of thing. So it's picking it and then that's a baler just like a round baler in the back. So it's a bale and it is it's picking it. First job of the new Den Den. So I had to revamp my note. And there he is with another load. Oh no, that was Dan. So one day he said, Dad, I want to be a kid for this day. So he stayed back and then Dan ran this truck for a day. Jackson come out without Levi. And you can see the Den Den stick there. It has the uh, thumb on it, that heavy thumb. And this is the job I was trying to run that thumb on that Den Den, which sucked. It was a nose diving son of a buck. But there's a the, uh, load of popper on Dan. Big load of popper, good popper logs on Tiny. So here is a load that I, this is the day I was, the last day we worked down there. I ran the truck in a den den because Jordan had to get to pulling bridges up and we crossed the gas line had to put a bunch of, of uh, we crossed the co-op gas line fuel gas oil line 
and we had to put a bunch of crossings, a bunch of mats down and cross some mats. So I went to trucking by myself. Oh, here was a job we done. Uh, crossing, uh, uh, Mike, his uh, nephew works at the mill. He's a sawyer. He's a local. Uh, and he's had uh, the neighbors. So you had to cross Mike to get the timber out on the neighbor. And Mike's like, I don't want these big trucks in here tearing up my land, uh, making big access roads and stuff like that, which logistically sucked. But thanks to the community, the logging community in our neighborhood, thanks to Kleins, thanks to uh, Davin, Thank you, Davin, one of the loggers at La Halls in there. He had a tandem. We had two tandems from Kleins, hauling an OK Whopper and an old PD car. And then uh, Davin brought in his International. He's got this Bad Apple International, man. It's a cool little truck. Got a Cummins in it, smoking Cummins in it. We had two smoking A model cats in them other trucks from Kleins. And then me and Sergeant Pants. I was sharing this with Miles. I was like, here, here you go, Bubba. I said, I'm trying to, but I, I'm, me and old pants can't do as much. But like five, six miles down the road, and pants hauled a load in every night. One day, he ended up hauling a full day almost. So between three tandems running pretty much, two tandems ran full time the whole time. Klein's trucks ran full time on this whole job. And Davin come in when he got spare, and he'd come in and help us. He'd come in with his truck. And then me and Pants hauled a load in every day, and then one day we end up hauling. And we just, uh, but thanks to all these tandems. So when you get big for your britches, moving all these big log trucks and everything, doing this logging, don't never pass up and forget your tandems, because there's always a day that the tandems get pulled out and the tandems come in handy. So this is me giving respect to Corbett's, Lines and Sergeant Pants. Thank you guys and thank you Mr. Pants. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I hope that's got you up to speed on what's happened this summer and I hope that you all can make it through some of that without too much aggravation. Thank you everybody. Thanks for everything you do for us. Appreciate the heck out of it and have a wonderful day.